We have just been blessed by that choir. Oh, man, that's an understatement. I really feel like that. Amazing. Well, you're going to hear them again, so stay tuned right where you are. But right now, I want to introduce you to uh, Pastor D.L. Foster. He is the author of Touching a Dead Man. What a, a title. This is a great Touching title. a Dead Man. I guess if I touch myself, I guess I'm touching a dead man because we're supposed to be supposed to be dead to sin, right? Yeah. Amen. Well, he has a unique ministry, and we want to welcome to the set, Pastor Dale Foster. Thank you, Rob. God bless you. God bless you. Praise Amen. the Lord. God bless you. Uh, now, I, I want to just jump in because I know there's going to be tons there because uh, this is a very hot topic that you're yeah. talking about. Um, tell us just a little bit about your ministry, uh, witness for the wor witness to the world. Witness Ministries is a discipleship ministry uh, that focuses on helping individuals who struggle with homosexuality to come out of homosexuality into holiness. And that's been our mission since day one. That mission is um, brought about by my own deliverance 20, almost 21 years ago from what we call the lifestyle. Mm. God brought me out with his strong hand and delivered me. And I am first and foremost a witness. Uh, what am I a witness of? I'm a witness of God's power and his ability to change and transform human life. Wow. Mm. That's really, so, you know, that's such a strong stronghold of a sin that there is to say, though, that I've, you know, been delivered from that. Mm -hmm. Quite yeah. a statement. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of folks, you know, when they get, uh, I mean, from, from what you have told me when we were getting ready for the show, you were telling me there's... There's so, there's so many that are caught up in this. They don't know how to get out. Yeah. They're stuck. They, and, and it's such a sensitive topic. And the church doesn't want to deal with that kind of topic because it's, it's such a, a taboo thing to talk about. Right. So they really don't know who to turn to. And for you to say that you've been delivered, I'm, I'm certain there's somebody who's watching the show and said, oh, I'm here. I mean, he, this guy's going to be talking to me. Praise God. And, and I really believe you're, you're here for such a time Praise as this. God. How, how was it that, that God delivered you from this? And, and what, do you, what has God done in your life to help you be the conduit of God's grace yeah. to deliver those who are also caught up in that yeah. sin? 21 years ago, uh, April 12, 1990, I was a broken man going down for the last time. Mm -hmm. I was so lost in my sins that, like many people, I didn't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to rescue myself, how to change myself. I didn't think change was a possibility. In my mind, I just, I felt hopeless. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was going to die and go to hell a homosexual, and I didn't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of my turmoil with my life, God saw me. You know, it's amazing to me that God, who created the world, who created all that we see, who is God of all things, would look down and see me in Columbus, Georgia, mm. see me in my pain. And even though I didn't really know how to cry out to him, he came and rescued me. It wasn't the church that rescued me. God came and rescued me. And I owe him my allegiance today. And so I have purposed that I would tell this world I don't care if it's just me. I'm going to tell the world that God is a deliverer. Amen. And, uh, you know, he's never left without a witness. Amen. And uh, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three, let everything be established. And it's not just me. There are many more that God has brought out. Amen. And so my uh, responsibility to God really comes from Luke 22 and 31, where Jesus tells Peter, uh, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But he says, I have prayed for you. And when, that your faith fail you not. And, 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 and I love this part. And when you are strengthened, mm. strengthen your brothers. Mm. So there's a responsibility that we have when God brings us out mm. not to forget those who are where we used to be. Mm. And I hold that as a very sacred responsibility that God has done for me. Since that time, we have developed programs. We, uh, we reach out in all kinds of ways. We educate. We listen. We talk. We pray. We cry. Because there are so many people, young and old, who are struggling with their sexuality, with identity, and God wants them to know tonight that he is who the Bible says that he is. Mm. And he can do exactly what the Bible said he can do. And I'm a witness of that. You're speaking to someone tonight. Glory to God. Yeah. You're watching the show tonight, and this man has been sent to you to speak to you tonight. This is a part of your deliverance. Thank God for that. And we're going to ask you a couple of questions. I know these are going to be loaded questions. Well, well, well one thing I actually that you were saying that popped in my head that I wanted to ask you is, you know, you're, you're talking about a deliverance, but 
Uh, one thing I've noticed that's popular in the world right now is, is what about that person, um, and they can even be a Christian, who says, sure. what can me, you know, being delivered from what? This is who I am, I was and born this like is, this. This is no, there's nothing wrong with this. Absolutely. You know, I felt that way at one point in my life. I felt that being a homosexual man was who I was. Yeah. And you know, at the core of this issue with sexuality is identity. It's an identity issue at its core. Mm -hmm. And until a person finds out who they are mm -hmm. in terms of who God created them to be, That's powerful. Uh -huh. they will always follow a false path. Satan has so many false roads. Yeah. And he sends people down so many false roads. And homosexuality is just one of them. Mm -hmm. But when we find God and we find out who he is, we find ourselves in, the, in his image. Mm -hmm. As someone said before, we are image bearers yes. of the creator. And it's interesting that in Isaiah 6, Isaiah had almost the same problem. Mm -hmm. He was seeing God, but through the eyes of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. and, when, uh, and, and it opens up and says, in the, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And when he saw God, he saw him true, his true self. That's and he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And any time you try to find yourself in another person, you will always find a false image. Mm -hmm. But when you find God, you will see yourself for who you really are. And then when you see yourself for who you really are, God will come and show you what he wants you to do. Because he's, remember, he sent the coal and put it on his lips and yeah. hey, now you're all clean. Yeah. Now, can I get you to do something for me? Right. Wow. So praise God. You know, it, it, it <laughs> is, it is a, it, it's a question. It's a legitimate question. Yeah. Who am I? Matter of fact, every Christian ought to ask themselves that question. Yeah. Who am I and what should I be doing? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Jesus did the same thing in Mark 8. Sure he did. asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And they came up with you know, all these equations and things. And uh, Peter got the revelation. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. And then after they got the revelation of who he was, mm -hmm. he began to explain to them what he must do. And if we never understand who we are, we will never do what God meant for us to do. And I think that's the issue with a lot of people who struggle with their sexuality. They are here and there because they don't really know who they are. Yes. And without that intervention from the church, without that intervention from wise men and women of God to point them towards God and says, this is who created you and this is why he created you, you'll continue to sort of meander through a lot of problems. Mm. Why is it um, that the uh, a homosexual lifestyle um, or population, why does it at least, re it seems like it's growing. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just curious, like, why, you know, why is that? Why is there, mm. and, and not only growing, and I think uh, our culture, the America kind of encourages it on, on celebrates Coming sure. out of the closet. Should have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, why is that? Where Where did you know? Where's the church gone wrong? How about that? Well, no, to the answer to your first question is perception. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to take you one man, take a megaphone and stand out there with that megaphone, speak people would hear it from a distance. Yeah. And so it's not that the fact that the homosexual community is growing is that they are very adept at. Uh, taking their voice and they spreading it. It's a very <laughs> small <laughs> part of the population, but okay. they're extremely vocal, okay. and they are extremely persistent. And my question to the church is, if we have the true answer, we have the right way, mm -hmm. if we do, and if we're convinced of that, right. why is our voice so passive? Yeah. Why yeah. are we so silent and not proclaiming what Jesus said in Isaiah 61? I'm here to preach liberty to the captives. Well, could it be that the church is that they don't know who they are. They're lacking uh, aggressiveness because they don't know who they are. Watch out now. I mean, they don't, they don't, they don't want to start preaching. <laughs> yes, sir. But, I, you know, you think that could be the problem, that the church maybe has become dormant because they've lost their identity? And if you don't, have a, you don't know who you are, you have no power. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it comes back to that same thing again. I, it's an identity issue. The church in America, perhaps, uh, you know, everywhere, is going through an identity crisis. We have to get back to who we are. Mm -hmm. We were put here to preach a gospel of yes. Jesus Christ and to reconcile a broken world to a holy God. Mm -hmm. When we get off of that, we lose our own identity. And you even uh, brought up uh, in your ministry, I know it's, it's on your website, that, uh, the, that in church, uh, ministers and pastors, not just church members, right. are also struggling with homosexuality. Yes, sir. 
Uh, uh, homosexuality as well, you know, as sin in general is a great equalizer. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't care who you are. Yeah. It just wants to be a part of your life. And leaders are struggling. And if, if, if the head is struggling, how can I instruct the body? Because the body gets right. instructions yeah. from the head. Okay. And so, and who do they call? And who do they call? Yeah. Because they're leaders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean a, a church member can call the yeah. pastor, but who does the pastor? And I think that's why there's so many member. pastors um, and churches that have this falling out because mm -hmm. the pastor gets stuck in this of uh, I'm struggling, but I can't call anyone. Right. They feel alone. Yeah. And, and then and eventually, yeah, yeah, they get. You know, People have told me that, uh, you know, hey, I went to a certain person for help and I ended up getting manipulated by this person. We've got. Uh, layers upon layers of issues yeah. that we have to deal with without fear. Yeah. And that's a part of it is that fear has crept in and we fear mm. what we don't feel like we have the answer to, but in the Word of God is the answer and the solution to every human condition, Amen. no matter how mm -hmm. serious it may seem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we'll have a couple minutes left. So actually, though, I want to hear Pastor Foster to Talk to th that person out there that's watching right now. Right. Encourage that person who's struggling. Because I'm, I'm with Rob. I firmly believe there is someone who is tuned in at this point in time to hear what you have to say. Praise so, God. What uh, is an encouraging word you can give to someone specifically who is struggling with homelessness? Yes, right? yes. And this is the appointed time. Yeah. You know, this is the hour and the moment that God has ordained for you, sir, you, ma'am, who are watching me, watching us on this show, to know that God has come specifically to let you know on this night, at this hour, that deliverance has come to your house. Amen. And it is for you. It's not for your brother. It's not for your sister. It is for you. And I've come to tell you that I'm a witness that whatever you're struggling with right now, if you can just come to Jesus. And it's interesting that Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He doesn't ask you to give up your homosexuality. He just says, come. Mm -hmm. He's got the answer. If you can just get in motion and come to him, he's got the solution. So I want to encourage you tonight, come to him. Amen. And in the book, Touching a Dead Man. Woo! I Watch love, out. I just <laughs> love that title. How, where yes, can they get that book? That book is available on my wi uh, website, which is Witness for the World, Touching a Dead Man, One Man's Story of now Deliverance said, from Two things, where can I get it? Witness for the world. Witness for the world. Dot org. Dot org. That's my website. You can yeah. find the book there. We have lots of information. We have resources. We have everything there. If you can just go there, uh, they can be blessed. So witness for the world. Dot org. Pastor Dale, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It's been a real blessing. Glory to God. Bless you. Absolutely. You check out that website and get that book. If you need any any help, you can call that number. It's on your screen and our prayer partners will pray for you. But right now,